Okay, here we are. Hi everybody, welcome to my studio. I thought I'd try this live video thing again. So you're with me live in my studio. I'm working on this painting, uh, it's called Clementine. Uh, this is the underpainting stage. So yesterday I spent uh, about three, four hours putting in the face. And now today we're gonna work on the hand. I'm just gonna work on the hand today with you guys and let you see my process of kind of oil paint sketching. And that is done here. I have um, transparent oxide red that I mixed with a little bit of Viridian and some walnut oil. So if you've seen, I have a free video, three ways to start an oil painting um, portrait. And what I do is I cover the entire board with walnut oil, a very, very thin layer. And that way I can manipulate the paint for two, three, sometimes four days, depending on the, how thick it is. But it's a really thin layer of oil. So you don't want it to be soupy or too thick. So when you start painting the transparent oxide red, it's such a thin layer and it's transparent. It's almost like working with watercolors. So I've also um, started off with a bit of a grid. So I just divide my canvas in half and then that, I divide that in half again. So it's quarter grid and I have it pulled up on the computer monitor next to me here. And I'm gonna be putting her hand in and you guys can watch. Let's see, I think you can see pretty good. Maybe I could get a little closer for you. Let's see if we just come in a little closer. I want you guys to be able to really see what we're doing here. There we go. All right, that looks good. I think you guys can see. And I like to use my proportion tool. And what I do is I use these grid lines as sort of an armature or a, an anchor to where things are gonna go. So what I've got happening is her index finger that's touching the hat is intersecting, intersecting <laughs> where this line is. Oh boy. These are the kind of things you can't edit out. So I'm going to actually measure from this line how far how far it is that her finger is coming into the hat and it's right here. So I know that I'm going to go to here and there. So we're just going to make that mark. And finger comes in this way. Now the lights from above. So there's going to be a shadow on this side. And you can push this paint around like watercolor. If you've ever worked with watercolor, it's kind of the same principle. And I'm just working really light and thin to begin with. I've got this makeshift uh, mall stick. So let's use our grid and the proportion tool to see how wide her finger is. And I got it. I like to sketch it in and then check it. I feel like it keeps my drawing skills kind of honed in that way. I mean, you'll see on the three ways to start an oil painting. I mean, if you're a very, very beginner, you may want to trace your reference image. Nothing wrong with that. You may want to use a projector. I don't own a projector, but uh, sometimes I feel like, why do I uh, put myself through the sketching process when I uh, could just do that? 
but it's it's nice to to work on the sketch. I think it helps you work through some of the things that are going to come up with the painting. And the beautiful part about doing the underpainting like this, you're just working on the drawing and values because it's one color. So we're not worried about any color situations here. We're just basically sketching with paint. I don't have to worry about any value stuff. Which I like. I can only think about so many things at once. So that brings us to this finger, which is coming up and it's just slightly bending here. And I like to really take my time with the underpainting process. I don't want to rush it. And what I can do is check how far that finger goes from this grid line. And it's going to come out to about right here. So there we go. Now I know that finger is long enough. This is one of my more formal paintings, so I don't want to uh, have to do too much correcting from the underpainting stage. I like to really nail the underpainting before I start adding the colors in. So I'm going to look at the angle of that bottom finger, and that's pretty much it. It's got a bit of a round tip here. So I'm just pulling down some of that paint. I like to work in masses. So unlike just um, doing line drawing or sketching with a pencil, when I have the, fit, the paintbrush, then I know I can work with masses and I just feel like my brain sees that better than just lines. So there's a lot of light hitting this part of the finger. So I just want to make note of it ever so slightly. And it kind of gets a lost edge going into this finger here. I'm just going to use my hands, fingers to smudge. And there's another finger. This is the pinky bending here. So let's measure from this line to where the pinky's gonna be. And got it. But I can also check it from this grid line so we have more of a solid concrete. And yep, that looks good too. And this is in shadow, so it's gonna have a bit of a darker line. It doesn't come out quite as far as this one. So stop it about right there and then check it from our grid line. And that looks good. So, kind of rounded here at the tip of the pinky. So, I'm thinking in masses and volume rather than lines. There we go. So I'm going to keep filming this painting as it unfolds so that I'll have a video for you guys. It's a little more formal video of the 
process of her finished. I'll show you how I mix up the skin tones and all that good stuff. I want her face to have a really, really high level of realism. I want it to be smooth. Unlike a lot of my portraits where you can see more of the brush strokes, I'm going to put some serious uh, detail into that face so that the outer, as you move away from it, it's going to get more um, brush painterly, a little more abstract, but I'm going to put a high degree of realism into that face, which is going to be pushing it for me. I don't typically put such degree of uh, realism into my portraits. You know, I, I like to do the selective start, which I'll still be doing a um, kind of a version of that. What I'll do is once I get my skin tones mixed up, I'll probably start with an eye and then just keep building out from there right on top of the fully dried underpainting. That's super important. The underpainting has to be so completely dry. You don't want to... Uh, be putting your paint on top of a wet underpainting. You'll end up with mush. So I hope you guys are staying warm if you're in an area where it's all snowy. I'm here in sunny South Florida and it's just a little overcast, but it's pretty warm. <laughs> What's my uh, 74 degrees here today? So if you guys are in the snow, I hope you're keeping warm. I like playing in the snow. All right, so I want to use the proportion tool and see, I'm going to check the bottom of the base of the pinky. And that's coming out coming down to about right here. So there's a crease that I've located. Just kind of smoothing that out there. I don't want any heavy, hard brush strokes. Not yet anyway. Not until I'm 100% certain that things are in the right place then they can be more solidified in. And I like my hands to have, like you wanna overlap some of the shapes. So like this pinky, for instance, this part is overlapping this part underneath here. And in order to show that, then there's gonna be light hitting this rounded part. So there's another line that's pretty dark. So I'm going to measure where it's hitting out yep, right about here. And it's angling to, I'd say, if you're looking at the hands on a clock to about 10 o'clock, 12, 11, 10, yeah. This one could be angled up a little more. See how you can just push that paint around like that. No erasing <laughs> required. And then I can get this crease in. There we go. Now, Let's see. So I'm going to use this grid line to see how far out my hand's coming at this knuckle. So I'm putting it right on top of my monitor. My monitor has my reference image pulled up and I've put a grid on top of it. The grid on my monitor is exactly the same size grid as what is on my canvas. 
that's super important if you're using a grid. If they're not exactly the same size, then measuring with a proportion tool will not work. There we go. I feel like this little needs a little more roundness to it. So I'll just pull that down and it's coming right into here. And this is coming up. Hope you guys can see. And it's in the shadow, so it can be pretty dark line. And it's going to overlap, so it's going to come in front of that bottom part. I'm going to make it just a tiny bit darker for now. Here we go. So we've got the pinky in. Now there's some dappled light happening. So right about here, where this upper crease is, you can see there's a little bit of light peeking through. And then there's a shadow here. And it comes over. And then there's another little bit of a bit of dappled light under there. Like that. If you put down some marks with this underpainting and you feel it's a little too dark, you can always press a paper towel over it. So we've got this, looks like her middle finger touching the hat here. And we have another finger that's coming up. It's her pointer finger. I'm going to use my grid line and it is intersecting the grid line right about here. Let me get you guys a little closer. Sure, you're in focus. <laughs> okay. So we're coming up. So this finger, I would say, is aiming at about two o'clock. And I'm going to put in the shadow. Remember, I'm working in masses. I'm not really thinking in lines, I'm thinking in shapes. So this shadow shape is coming just to the tip of this bent finger here. So it kind of intersects like that. You don't have to load a lot of paint on your brush. It can really, um, your brush can just keep pushing this paint around since there's a good bit of walnut oil on the panel and it'll, uh, it just keeps giving you paint. I don't have to load my brush often at all. And you'll notice we're getting some nice lost edges with this hand. And it's good. You can think of the hand almost like its own little portrait by itself. And as with any portrait, you want to have some lost and found edges. Having a variety of edges is very helpful in getting a really great portrait. So this is bringing us down to the palm of the hand. This is a little bit of a crease right underneath this tip of the pinky, like that. So 
So I'm going to check how far down from that grid line. So right about here, it intersects in a little bit. And then it comes back out. And then it brings us into the thumb. So at the base of the thumb, I'm thinking it's going to be about right here. Let's check it and see if I'm right. Uh, it's a little off, so it's a little bit higher than what I thought. So I brought that line up. And there is a little shadow shape, triangular shape there. And then it gets the thumb into the light. So I'm going to paint it really with a light touch. And it comes right into this braid pretty much. And then there's a shadow shape happening underneath the thumb. Like so. There we go. This comes up a little bit here. Pull that paint up. And there's our thumb. So the base of the hand is bringing us down here. And let me see, I have a nice line of the hand intersecting. So let's use it on the grid. Check it. About right here. It's going to come in. And then the wrist is happening. about right here. And then that brings us down into the forearm. And I want to see how far from that line. We've got right about here, a wrist bump happening. So there's that. I like looking for any kind of shape that'll help keep me from doing too many straight lines. There should be nice convex lines, concave lines in your hand. And I've got a little bit of overlapping line there. That's this is in the light. It's pretty bright sunlight hitting that part of the arm. So I'm keeping those lines pretty, keeping them light. Let me get a little thicker brush. And I'm going to put in the shadows that are on the palm of the hand. We can go back and put some of the palm lines after we get the shadow in. Right now I'm just kind of squinting at my reference and looking where the shadow falls. Coming down like that. Okay, this thenar eminence, <laughs> the fat meaty part of your thumb is round and has some volume. So it's gonna be darker 
inside here and then get a little rounder but it's still in shadow so that's why I went back and darkened the inside of that palm area a bit more to give us some contrast to work with and so it rounds down and away from the light here again so nice round in our eminence. And it's a little bit more shadow here on this finger, base of that finger there. And there's more shadow here. I think that's pretty good. Now I like to have a good amount of detail in the hand as well as in the face. They're close enough together that I think it can warrant having a little more detail than I'm going to put in the background and say in the dress. So I do want to have some notes of these wrist creases and the palm creases. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get a little more paint on my brush. And the first one I want to get is this round one here. It goes right about here, actually. And at the bottom of this pinky, there's a finger crease. There we go. I just wanted to put a little more meat on that finger. So I'm just pushing this paint around. like that and so we had that little bit of dappled light but it doesn't hit here so we're going to pull some paint into that area like that and there's a bit more shadow here almost looks like a kind of a triangular shape I see this line coming through here towards the pinky and this bit more shape up here. I'm just pushing that paint into this thinner line and up towards this pinky. Our hand is taking, taking shape. Got fuzzies on my brush.
just to fine in that a little bit more. Now there is a fingernail. I'm gonna use my smaller brush. Push that. Just create a little line like so. I just push the paint around until I can see that fingernail come to life. And there's a little bit of a line here. There we go. And a little shadow on top of it. And it's rounded, so I'm gonna get that in. There we go, fingernail. Now this fingernail needs to go in. It's not quite as thick as the one on the pinky. It's hiding. And it comes down a little bit here. There we go. These are very subtle um, marks, but the more correct detail I can put in now, the less I have to think about drawing when I'm putting in the color later. I really want to work on getting the values down correctly. Now, rather than later. This line needs to soften up. You don't see it so much. Let's just use my finger. There we go. Good old finger blender. <laughs> The other thing I like to use is my kneaded eraser. So I want to put a little bit of light on this guy like that. Need a little more angle. There we go. This finger will stand out as more in the light once I put some of the background in. All right, let's see, how's our hand looking? It's coming along. This is a little bit too dark. There we go. There's not a hard line here, so let's get rid of that. That's better. All right. A lot of people say hands are hard. If you just look at them as shapes, I think it makes it a little easier. Don't think of them, don't think of them as hands. Just look for the shapes. And 
and you'll get it that way. So you can noodle with your drawing until the cows come home. I'm not really sure how long that is, but <laughs> uh, you know, until you feel like everything's perfect, that's the beauty of putting that walnut oil down initially. You can really play with this underpainting until you're happy. And you don't have to rush. So important to take your time with whatever part of the pain process you're in. Take breaks, clear your mind, clear your eyes, come back and have a fresh look at things. You guys want to see the painting I have on the easel behind me? I'll show you. So I started this painting because I needed to stop looking at this painting over here. Okay, don't get dizzy. This guy I've been working on. Let's see if we got it in focus. There we go. For a few weeks now got a really cool wood base and there's another piece of wood that goes on the top part so you won't see all that mess at the top I'll crop it so you kind of get the full effect but that is two cowboys on their horses riding through water and I'm really working on putting some details into those splashes but I didn't want to overwork it and uh, keeping the cowboys backlit so that their faces are in shadow so I didn't want to overly paint those guys in so I got to a point where I think I needed a break so I said hey I'm gonna go work on Clementine so here's a look at my setup I got her on the computer with my little grid lines and here's what we're working on getting that hand I feel like it's pretty close. Just want to be able to see this line ever so slightly. This finger goes right into that pinky without too much, kind of sways in. It's almost like a concave line. Use that kneaded eraser again. There we go. Just paint in a little bit of the background. It'll help distinguish where our finger is. She's got some trees behind her at about this level in the painting. So just make some arbitrary color coming through here. So I can see my hand better.
Back to the knee eraser. I'm actually excited to get to the portrait color, skin colors. I'm really going for a high level of realism with her face and skin. That's going to be uh, interesting for me to push myself to do that. Soften up that little bit of a bump. A little bit. It was a little bit much. All right. Let's take a look at it from further back. All right, I'm going to move you guys back. Here we go. Okay. Focus, there we go. I feel like it's looking pretty good. Although, now that I step back, I am not loving, this is a bit abrupt. Let me see, how far away this part is from her shoulder. We came out pretty far. Let's take away. Let's take away some. That'll fix our angle. She's got a beautiful feminine hand. I don't want any weird, hard, shapey lines. Like if it was a guy's hand, you'd get away with that kind of stuff. John Singer Sargent paints the most beautiful women's hands. I think he does it in like three brush strokes. Crazy. <laughs> That's what it seems like. If you go look at him. That's better. So let's look at it. Let's see. I see the angle. Like so. So that's the correct angle. That's better. I like that better. You guys like that better? Let me bring you back closer so we can see it. Yeah. I think we're focused. Yeah. I think that's good. See a little more shadow. Get some paint on that guy. So I took this picture myself. I was at a photo shoot in Kansas, a Western photo shoot. So there's all kinds of <laughs> authentic, really cool cowboys running around. That picture, um, that paint I just showed you, the horses with the water, that was taken there as well. These guys really know what they're doing. They're not playing. They're real cowboys. And they have a costume department there. So I asked the woman that was in charge of the costumes. I'm like, I want to get a girl. It looks kind of period, you know, with the hat. And I want to put her out in the uh, field here and get this picture. So we got it. I toyed with calling her Magnolia, but then I felt like I would have had to use Magnolia flowers and that wasn't the flower that was in her hat. So I went with Clementine. I don't feel like that has too much to do with flowers. Yeah. 
This feels like sculpting sometimes when you're going back in and getting some of these lines in that paint. Need a little bit wider shadow here. We don't want this part of the hand where the light's hitting needs to not be too uh, too wide. So that's better. All right, I feel like there's enough information here. So when I go to put in the color, I'm going to be good. Maybe there's a little bit more value here. Now there could be some reflected light coming up and around off, bouncing off her hair braid and her dress. And the thing with this being outdoors, the uh, shadows and the light are pretty strong. Okay, cool. Well, I hope you guys liked that little live uh, hand painting, underpainting deal. And if you haven't grabbed the free how to start a portrait painting three different ways, three different ways, <laughs> um, there's links in all my descriptions and uh, I'll go back and put it in this description so you can grab it there. But it's free yeah, and you can grab it and it'll show you how I do this process um, brush stroke by brush stroke, step by step. And uh, it's three different ways. So if you're a very, very beginner, it'll help you. And if you're more intermediate, it'll help you as well. And I'll give you three options on starting a portrait. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll um, bring you back into my studio another day. Have a good one. Stay warm.